Um, the webinar today will be about uh, uh, Z-Wave network diagnostics. We will especially talk about Z-Wave gateway, but um, uh, only in the aspect of uh, Z-Wave network diagnostics and not about uh, the gateway itself. Uh, I think we will make a um, few more uh, webinars in the upcoming weeks uh, discussing uh, uh, the gateway itself and uh, its capabilities. Uh, right now, uh, it will be only about um, network stability uh, and uh, uh, link quality between devices. I think we reached uh, most of uh, our attendees. Um, please note that um, uh, on the top right you have uh, two icons. One is for comment where you write your comments and another one is for questions uh, with the question mark. And uh, if you want to ask questions, uh, it's worth to, to write in that place. Um, some of the questions, most of the questions we will try to answer right uh, during uh, this session. Um, some questions that are not really relevant to uh, the today's topic, we will answer personally to um, um, everybody or uh, we will uh, invite you to the next webinar. We will discuss um, uh, additional topics. Uh, this uh, webinar will be recorded and um, a link will be sent to all of you a few days after. Additionally, the presentation that we will show today will also become public and uh, we will publish it on our website and you will be free to, uh, to uh, use it and uh, read it again after uh, today. Uh, okay, let's begin. I will turn off uh, my video and we'll come uh, back uh, for the Q&A session. Uh, and now we start. So, Z-Wave Z Network Diagnostics um, with Z-Wave con Controller. Z-Wave is a controller that um, is manufactured by Z-Wave Me, by us. And uh, today we will talk about uh, how to make your network stable. Uh, so, first, uh, oops, just, yeah. uh, first of all, um, for whom this uh, webinar for? First of all, it's for in, uh, installers. Uh, installers who uh, install Z-Wave devices um, uh, in, on customer sites. And uh, it is also for advanced users who has big um, apartments and big Z-Wave networks, and they experience problems. Uh, this um, topic will be uh, very helpful and useful for uh, kind of minimum buildings and um, apartments uh, with uh, area more than 100 square meters. This is because in the smaller apartments, usually the routing uh, is not a problem. Uh, everything that we will um, uh, discuss here is uh, uh, applicable to the Z-Way controller, but uh, you can also use Z-Way as a diagnostic tool if you have your uh, own controller from another manufacturer like Fibaro, Zipato, Vira, uh, SmartThings, uh, Z-Ware-based controller or some open source stuff like Demotics or open Z-Wave-based. Um, of course, um, today we will require you to have some basic Z-Wave uh, knowledge, especially uh, what type of devices do exist in Z-Wave and um, what Z-Wave is in general. Still, we will try to uh, keep things simple. Uh, what is the reason to uh, start network diagnostics? Uh, of course, uh, it's about customer complaints. Uh, on about unstable operation. Um, uh, also, sometimes people experience slow turn on off or other operations, um, spontaneous freezes of uh, control. When you click on uh, buttons, nothing happens, and then suddenly uh, all the commands that you clicked before um, are executed at once. Um, packet delivery issues. And uh, also, it's important to confirm before leaving the uh, customer site that the network is well meshed and links are 
strong enough. Uh, this is to avoid uh, the customer callback uh, and complaints. Uh, common problem in, in large networks uh, are usually caused by several uh, reasons. Uh, one is uh, because of the customer um, unplugging devices. This is especially true for uh, plug-in modules that are plugged in the wall. And in that case, the customer sometimes, uh, uh, when he needs that socket, he will just uh, remove the plug and uh, connect something else. Um, this also means that uh, customers sometimes move devices, uh, and um, that also affects the uh, quality. Uh, of course, for battery devices, low battery is a big problem. And um, uh, if you experience problems with battery devices, this is the first thing to test. Um, in big networks, insufficient network coverage uh, can be a major problem uh, with connectivity. Uh, if you have a big network and uh, big apartments, apartment, your devices can be too far from each other. And in that case, you might need a better meshing uh, and uh, more repeaters to cover your, uh, your apartment. Uh, additionally, Z-Wave is a routing system and it can rebuild routes during the life cycle of the apartment um, home automation. And, um, uh, because of unstable environment, the routing table might change, and this can also result in problems. And of course, finally, um, there, there might be devices that just fails for various reasons, uh, because of um, uh, people breaking them, because the device was uh, uh, of bad quality or just uh, reached the end of life. Uh, all those reasons can cause uh, serious problems and um, we will discuss how to uh, uh, localize them. Um, before uh, you start with uh, the study, it's important to prepare and collect as much data as you can. Uh, and um, uh, when you experience problems with devices, first of all, uh, you need to ask your customer or reach the site uh, yourself and understand what are the problems, uh, what exactly they are expressed in. Uh, can you reproduce the, those problems? Uh, what type of devices are involved and are similar devices in the same network uh, uh, shows the same behavior? Uh, then you need to analyze how far the controller is uh, from devices, how the network is meshed, and how many main, main power devices are there um, in this apartment, and uh, what is the exact location. Uh, so one of the very important steps is to get a network map uh, with location of all the devices on a floor plan. And also it's important to understand what are the materials used um, in the apartment. Uh, let's discuss in brief how routing table in SeedWave uh, works and uh, um, because this will help us to understand uh, how to solve problems. First of all, all mains powered devices in Z-Wave are automatically uh, becoming repeaters. That means uh, they will participate in packet forwarding between uh, distant devices in the network. Uh, Z-Wave uses uh, a so-called source routing mechanism. That means the sender is uh, uh, choosing the route uh, the packet will fly and the packet will use. Uh, and uh, the route itself is not calculated by end devices, but instead is calculated by the controller during network reorganization or network configuration. For example, when you set up associations or set, set up various parameters like wake up period. And at that point, the controller will push routes to end devices and end devices will memorize them. Uh, if it's not possible to, for the device to reach the destination using the saved routes, it will start a, a special uh, mechanism that will flood the network with uh, questions, where is my destination? And um, all the nodes that are 
participating in the routing table, uh, the routing will try to help and reach that destination. This mechanism is called explore frame, and uh, this is a so-called last resort in case nothing else ha helps. Explore frame takes about two, four seconds uh, in large networks, and um, uh, the route that was uh, th that will be found is uh, quite often not optimal. That means this is really the last resort in case uh, nothing helps. Uh, to understand how um, devices and controllers um, choose uh, routes to send packets, it's important to understand the mechanism behind uh, uh, this routing table. Uh, first, we will analyze how the controller is uh, choosing the correct path uh, to send packet. Uh, the controller uh, hosts several routes uh, in its memory. Uh, first of all, it's, uh, uh, it will save your preferred route if you have set it, and um, uh, if not, it, uh, it will save the last working route. Last working route is the route that was used uh, last and uh, that succeed to reach the destination. Uh, the controller will also have room for another uh, last working route, so-called next to last working route, NLWR. Uh, this is another route that worked before the last one. Uh, and uh, first, the controller will try those two. Then it will assume, okay, maybe the device is reach, reachable directly, and we'll try direct range. And then we'll try five more routes calculated instantly uh, uh, using the uh, neighbor's table that the controller uh, knows. And then, as a last resort, we'll issue explore frame uh, to flood the network and find the destination. Uh, as you can see, uh, the preferred route is always tried first, and preferred route uh, will be uh, your uh, solution if routing, if routing table is not stable and you want to help the internal Z-Wave algorithm to do better. Uh, it's important to note that, last work, uh, that preferred route is available only on uh, controllers based on SDK uh, 6.71 and upper. Uh, but most of uh, currently existing uh, controllers can be upgraded, uh, and uh, the Z-Wave chip firmware can be um, upgraded to that version. If you look on uh, how it works in slave devices, uh, of course it's much simpler, because slave devices uh, um, have not that uh, much room for a complex algorithm. And um, uh, here only one last working route is uh, hosted. Uh, and this route is tried first. Uh, then um, the device will try uh, preferred route if set. And then additionally, uh, three more routes uh, to reach the destination. Uh, finally, it will try direct range and then explore frame. Uh, Please note that uh, when uh, a controller or a slave device is trying to reach uh, the destination, each step will be tried uh, two or three times, depending on um, controller and slave devices. And uh, this means that before reaching the explorer frame mechanism uh, to deliver the packet, there will be uh, quite a lot of tries to transmit your packet. And that uh, means before reaching Explorer frame, uh, several, um, a, a, pr a pretty big delay will already take place. Uh, Explorer frame itself, as mentioned before, will take uh, from two to four seconds in large networks to try to reach the destination. Uh, of course, the uh, route that uh, would be found using Explorer frame will be saved in last working route and uh, used uh, until that route fails. Um, it's important to note that uh, environment um, affects quite a lot uh, 
the routing table. This is because um, uh, devices, uh, they are not just in a vacuum, but in a real apartment where uh, different objects can move. Uh, moving objects uh, can affect change routing table. It can change device reachability. For example, if you open or close the door, especially if the door is made of, uh, uh, for example, metal, this will affect quite a lot um, the network and uh, can make some routes um, not available anymore because of um, uh, that metal part that moved. Uh, because of the interference and uh, radio effects, moving stuff in your apartment can really change a lot the picture of um, a routing table. Beside that, there is a, an effect of um, the time of the day and, or of the year. This is because the temperature and humidity changes and this also uh, change quite a lot the uh, uh, link between devices uh, and can affect uh, your routing table. Uh, for example, in some apartments, uh, you can see that uh, during the morning and the evening, Z-Wave network is working quite good. But at the same time, it's not working good uh, during the day where if uh, the temperature is uh, quite hot and the humidity increases. Uh, disconnected devices uh, breaks routes that uh, goes through those devices. Uh, and it's important to locate disconnected devices and connect them back as soon as possible. Uh, additionally, uh, if uh, the route that was used has a link that was um, on the very limit of the range, uh, that link will become unstable because of the environment change. And uh, Z-Wave will require to reroute um, uh, to reach the device. Uh, as mentioned before, the last working route will save um, the last route that was successful in delivery of the message. That means the last working route can be one uh, of the four routes saved in the slave device or any other route, including an absolutely non-optimal route that was found uh, through explore frame mechanism. This is important to know and understand uh, because sometimes uh, if you look on um, routes that are actually used in your apartments, uh, you will find that they're um, absolutely non-optimal and uh, the reason is exactly because of Explore Frame. Assigning preferred route uh, can improve quite a lot the delivery of uh, packets and improve your network. Uh, when the routing is needed, uh, of course, Z-Wave is a mesh network um, protocol, but uh, the routing table is not uh, used so often. Uh, where routing is um, absolutely mandatory. Uh, when you communicate from the controller to devices and back, uh, routing table is used in most cases. This is before because uh, most of devices are quite far from uh, the controller and in the direct vicinity of the controller usually there are not that many devices and uh, if you want to control uh, those distant devices uh, from the controller uh, the routing table will be used uh, in the same way when those distant devices will be trying to report uh, their status to the controller they will again use routing table uh, when you set up uh, Z-Wave devices, by default, uh, the controller is put in the Lifeline Association group. Uh, this is the group where all reports end. And um, the controller will be notified by the device about all the status changes. Uh, so for this to work, of course, a stable routing table should be present in the uh, apartment. Uh, additionally, uh, you might have communication between distant devices in your house. Um, a good example is a flood sensor that is uh, controlling uh, uh, water 
uh, in the basement. For example, the flood sensor will be in the bathroom on the second floor, and in the basement uh, there will be a water vault that will block the water in case of leakage. Um, in uh, most other cases, the devices that are directly associated between each other are located nearby. Uh, for example, if you want uh, to turn on the light, usually the pedal that you press, the button that you press, is usually nearby um, uh, and located pretty close to the light itself. Uh, it's quite rare uh, when you turn on off the light uh, for some um, the light that you don't see and that uh, is far away from from you. Uh, most of um, uh, and nowadays, most of uh, complex scenes are anyway made through the controller, and that means uh, the, the button will report the button pressed to the controller, and the controller will um, uh, analyze that comment and decide whether uh, either to uh, turn on or off the light. Uh, so again, uh, this is a, a, a controller to device operation. Uh, let's illustrate this uh, um, um, on a picture. So if you have a home gateway in the center uh, and um, a lot of distant devices, most of devices uh, will use the gray arrows to report um, their status to the controller. So that requires, requires routing. Uh, additionally, we show a leakage control system uh, and uh, uh, the water uh, stopper that are usually placed in very different uh, locations. Uh, but if you look on the left, uh, you will see that the uh, button to turn on off the light or a fan, uh, they are usually located nearby to each other. That means routing table is not that important uh, to um, uh, that operation. Uh, let's also consider um, how uh, environment affects uh, the radio signal. Uh, it's important to understand what are the construction materials used in your, uh, in your apartment or in your house, because different materials will affect um, uh, in a different way uh, the signal strength. Uh, for example, if you look on a uh, uh, quarter-inch glass, it will attenuate only 8% of uh, the signal. But if you look on the, uh, in the stable build, uh, on the bottom, uh, for example, a con four-inch concrete wall will attenuate 60% percent, uh, percent of the signal. That means only 40% will re reach um, uh, the destination. Uh, and if you look on reinforced concrete uh, wall, uh, of 8 inch that will make the situation even worse. Only 10% will really propagate through the wall and reach the destination. If you want uh, to understand uh, how those different materials affect the signal, if uh, the signal have to pass different obstacles, uh, you have to make such a table. On the first um, column of that table, you will, uh, first of all, in the first line, place the original distance uh, and uh, then list all the obstacles. For example, um, a three-inch wood uh, wall will um, have 25% attenuation. That means 75% will reach uh, the destination. Uh, so we're multiplying 150 meters by 0 0.75 and we get 112 um, meters. Uh, then if there is another obstacle, for example, an 8-inch concrete block. So in our table above, we have only 4-inch. So we will just uh, put it twice, like um, um, if uh, our signal passed twice a 4-inch concrete wall. Uh, we repeat the same, but here the attenuation was 60%, so only 40% pass. Uh, we multiply uh, 112 meters by 40% uh, uh, pass through, uh, and we get 45 meters. And then for the second part of the wall, 
uh, we repeat the same and it will give us only 18 meters. Uh, just to compare, let's look how the same 8 inch reinforced concrete block itself without the wooden part, with the, the wooden uh, wall will affect the same signal. If we multiply, it will give 90% um, uh, attenuation, will give 10% uh, pass through. Uh, and that will give immediately only 15 meters. Uh, of course, when you uh, calculate the thickness, you have to consider the angle, um, uh, uh, the signal uh, propagates through the wall. Uh, so for example here, if we have two devices uh, that are uh, located uh, uh, on different sides of a wall, uh, if the wall is only 10 uh, centimeters thick, uh, the actual real thickness for the signal will be 20 centimeters in that example, uh, uh, because uh, the angle to the wall will be 30 degrees. And uh, uh, this explains why it's important to always look where your devices are located behind the wall and try to place them to let the signal propagate perpendicularly to the wall. This will uh, make the real thickness um, almost same as uh, the wall thickness. So once we discussed uh, all the most important aspects of um, uh, signal propagation and um, uh, problems that you might uh, experience. Uh, let's uh, look on the diagnostics tools that are available in Zidway controller. Uh, those tools uh, are located in Zidway expert user interface. Uh, and it's important to note that uh, most of Zidway controllers do not uh, have most of those tools. Some tools are available, but um, uh, not all of those tools. Of course, to use those tools, um, uh, it's required to install uh, Zidway uh, and uh, use uh, Raspberry or UZB uh, hardware. Uh, the hardware itself have to be upgraded to firmware version 5.36 or higher. And this can be done in uh, network controller information and uh, firmware upgrade uh, tab. In this tab, you uh, can choose which uh, version to install, and uh, you do step-by-step -step upgrade to the latest version. Uh, when it comes to the Z-Wave software, uh, here version 3.05 is, or higher should be used. Current version is 3.06. Uh, so some of the tools appeared only in previous version. Some tools exist for years and um, are well used by many installers. Uh, there, uh, the way to upgrade Zidway uh, is um, uh, different for different, different platforms. In most cases, you have to go to management and firmware upgrade in the smart home interface. Uh, if you are using Zidway uh, based controller but with a different user interface, uh, you have to ask your vendor how to upgrade Zidway to the latest version. Uh, let's uh, identify problematic areas and uh, use. Uh, here we will discuss uh, the following tools that are helpful for um, diagnostics. Uh, device status uh, will tell us if the device is uh, reachable or not. Battery status to report battery level. Uh, controller queue will help to understand well, why the controller is uh, um, executing commands with a delay. Delivery time statistics will give you understanding on how long it takes uh, for the controller to uh, send packets. Uh, Neighbors and associations will give you a brief idea about the routing table. And then a very important tool is routing map, uh, which is uh, uh, representing real routes in the network. Background noise and uh, transceiver statistics will give you 
an idea what's happening in the ether and uh, traffic analysis will help you to decode packets that are coming to the controller and from the controller. So let's go step by step through those tools. Device status in uh, Zidway Expert User Interfaces can uh, be located under Device Status uh, tab. And um, uh, with icons, you can immediately see if the device is available or not. Of course, if, if a mains powered device is not available, that means it was either disconnected or it just failed because of uh, uh, some uh, problem with the device. Uh, it's important to connect those devices back uh, and replace failed nodes uh, as soon as possible, especially if they were base for many, many different routes in the network. Uh, for battery devices, you can see last and next wake up. This is um, quite useful uh, to understand uh, when the device was last time um, um, and when it sent us a comment and when it will appear uh, next time to collect uh, a different configuration that we might uh, want to send to the device. Uh, after replacing uh, dead devices, uh, it's important to upgrade, uh, to update routes, uh, update routing table. Uh, again, dead devices affect quite a lot the network because all the routes that were uh, made through that special uh, node that was, uh, that uh, became dead, uh, all those routes will be immediately become invalid. and. Uh, this will uh, push the network to reorganize itself and find another route to reach uh, the destination. Uh, if you don't want to replace that dead node and you want just to delete it, it's also important to delete it, um, to remove it from the network as a failed device. Uh, and um, again, uh, Upgrade, update routes to let other devices understand that uh, this device should not be used anymore. Uh, if you experience problems with uh, battery devices, it's also important to look on battery level. Uh, so here you can see battery level and uh, sometimes, uh, for example, for device uh, 43, you can see that the level is zero. That means the device reports uh, a critical battery status, uh, but um, the time is uh, pretty recent. That means the device reported that uh, today. And uh, this means the device is still available, but uh, the battery should be re replaced as soon as possible. If we look on the device 33, uh, we see that uh, the battery status is 100%, that means full charge, but at the same time, the last uh, uh, battery report was quite a long time ago, so it was uh, last year. Uh, that usually means that uh, the device was just disconnected, so it was either taken away from the network or the battery was just removed. That means the device had no time to report battery pr problem. So if you see uh, a device with pretty good uh, charge, but uh, uh, not reporting you anything more, that certainly means the device is, uh, 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 has no battery and the battery was removed or the device was completely removed from that site. So this slide just repeats the same when you will um, Re, uh, read that presentation later, um, it will be helpful. Uh, it's also important to uh, make battery polling at least once a week to, uh, to make sure that you have uh, um, uh, up-to-date status of devices. It's not worth to make uh, that battery polling more often. Uh, next tool is outgoing queue. Uh, in Zidway controller, you can analyze all the packets that goes from the software to the uh, Zidwave 
chip uh, through the serial port. Uh, Zidway is using um, Silicon Labs Zidwave serial API to communicate with uh, uh, the Zidwave uh, chip. Uh, and uh, uh, here on the right, you can see uh, the exact command that was sent to the Zidwave chip. Uh, additionally, you have uh, information about uh, uh, every packet that is holded in the queue. Uh, of course, when you execute a lot of commands, uh, the controller will queue them and execute one by one. Uh, sometimes the execution uh, order is not that straightforward because um, if you look on the flags, you, will, you can see the W flag. Uh, that means uh, the packet will hold in the queue until the device will wake up and notify the controller that it's ready to receive that packet. Uh, also, some packets are encapsulated, and you can see E for encapsulation. In most cases, the S flag uh, will be together. The S means security. Uh, so before... Um, sending the packet itself, uh, the controller might need to negotiate security scheme and um, get a uh, uh, temporary key to encrypt that particular packet. Um, additionally, you see a lot of plus and minus signs that uh, explains uh, the detailed status of the packet. Uh, first is uh, delivered to the chip, Zigwave chip. Second is confirmed by the chip. Uh, third is delivered to the node. So we know that the packet was actually de delivered to the destination. And fourth is uh, uh, applicable only for requests like get packets. Uh, it, it means that um, a response was received on a request. Uh, and of course, the progress uh, column shows you in uh, what happens with uh, the status uh, in uh, in text in human readable text so for example here uh, we see that uh, a node uh, 44, uh, for 43 was uh, not reachable the packet was not delivered and uh, the system will uh, uh, not send uh, not continue to send packets to that node Uh, it's important to note that uh, long queue does not always understand um, uh, a lot of traffic. Uh, if you see the queue but um, with a lot of packets, but most of those packets are not actually sent, and uh, they are holded with W flag or even without it, that means uh, they are just waiting in the queue. Uh, jobs that are waiting in the queue do not eat any processor time uh, and uh, they don't eat any Zidwave ether time. Uh, w, as mentioned before, means uh, the packet is waiting for the device to be ready to receive uh, the packet. And uh, if there is no W but the packet is not sent, uh, that means this packet is waiting for the device to become available. If Zidway will see for several times that the device is not reachable, it will mark it as fail failed device and will stop sending any comments to the device to prevent uh, queue blocking. Uh, another uh, pretty important tool to analyze uh, uh, network quality is uh, delivery statistics or delivery time statistics. Uh, this is a pretty nice tool that uses uh, actually com actual comments that are sent um, during the life cycle of your um, home automation, and it will save up to 30 packets and uh, detailed information about those packets, 30 packets per each device. Um, and uh, here we will show um, how long it took to deliver. Uh, each packet and uh, what is the uh, delivery rate. So deliver, if you see that the delivery rate is uh, uh, far from 100%, that means the device is a problematic one. Um, then on the last packet uh, column, you can see uh, the time it took to deliver each individual packet 
uh, in 10 milliseconds units. Uh, uh, if you see, for example, uh, green uh, numbers, um, um, like two, three, five, uh, that means it took 20, 30, or 50 milliseconds to deliver a packet. Uh, this means not only to send it, but also to get a confirmation that it was delivered. Uh, 20 milliseconds is a very nice um, uh, result. Uh, but um, numbers that are bigger are shown, uh, that are bigger than 10, that means um, than 100 milliseconds, are shown in black. Uh, and uh, usually uh, this represents routing taking place. The more uh, repeaters are used uh, in the route, the bigger the number will be. So usually it's about uh, from 50 to 100 milliseconds per hop to um, deliver a packet and to get confirmation back. Uh, this uh, allows you to immediately understand looking uh, right here uh, what devices are in direct range and what devices uh, uses intensive routing to uh, communicate with the gateway. Uh, additionally, red uh, represents undelivered packets. And uh, you can also see that uh, some devices, uh, it took uh, like uh, uh, 10, um, uh, 10 seconds. To deliver so this is an extreme case in big network uh, where explorer frame took more than four seconds to try to deliver the packet uh, and if you see a lot of red and a lot of um, uh, uh, undelivered packets uh, this is a uh, an important indication that the device is a problematic one and you should increase uh, 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 the link quality by, for example, adding additional route repeaters on the way. Uh, also, it's important to understand that um, uh, for uh, FLIRS device, de FLIRS devices, the uh, delivery time of one second is a normal situation because um, FLIRS take uh, one second to wake up. So when you try to interpret this table, again, you should uh, look on the th following um, uh, following data. Uh, big percentage of failure, low delivery rate means big losses. Uh, and this is a problematic route. Uh, a lot of uh, black means long routing. And you need to optimize routing table. Uh, if you have uh, numbers greater than 200, that means rerouting is taking place and uh, the route is not reliable. Uh, and um, yeah, again, the, the FLIRS, uh, one second to reach the device is not a problem. This is um, uh, always like that for the first communication in the um, session of communication with a FLIRS device. Uh, neighbors map. Uh, each device uh, in Z-Wave uh, is asked uh, by the controller to uh, report back who are the neighbors. Uh, this neighbors map is used by um, uh, the controller to build uh, routing table and to push that routing table to um, to the device and uh, it's important to understand that um, uh, those are not actual routes but possible routes so of course uh, when you look on the neighbors table uh, the greener it is the better it is so green means direct visibility, red means uh, lack of direct visibility. And um, to communicate, um, routing table will be used. So uh, controller is using that table to make all the calculation to um, push the calculated uh, routes to each device during network configuration. Uh, 
uh, if you see a small number of green squares and a lot of uh, red squares, that means your network connectivity is not really good. Uh, of course, um, if you have a large network, many devices will uh, that are uh, far from each other will, of course, not see uh, each other, and this is normal. But uh, at least using that table, you can check that devices that should be reachable, and you expect them to be reachable, that they are, uh, in fact, seeing each other. Uh, it's uh, recommended to uh, update to that neighbor's table each time you make changes in your network. That means include, exclude a device, move a device, or move uh, objects uh, in uh, your apartment. Uh, this is done through network reorganization. Uh, and additionally, after uh, collecting that neighbor's map, new routes should be pushed to uh, each device. This is again made by um, uh, by network re reorganization. So now uh, uh, you might notice the black dot in some uh, cells. Uh, the black dot means there is an association between uh, the two devices. Uh, it's important to understand that uh, association that was set up is, for example, from the device, in that case, 17, to the device number one. This is the first column. And this is the lifeline. Uh, if you have direct association between two different devices, um, you will see the black dot uh, on the intersection um, of uh, the column and uh, the, the corresponding route, uh, row. Uh, why it's important to see uh, direct associations on the neighbors uh, and routing table. This is because if you uh, make direct association, you, uh, as mentioned before, either it's a report to the controller or uh, it's a direct control uh, from a device to another device. And in most cases, you would expect this to be in direct range. If it's not, uh, you should be sure that a routing will be used to deliver that comment, and uh, you should take care to make sure that the routing is strong enough. Um, in this way, you can go to devices, active associations, uh, to see uh, in one page all the associations that uh, are made in your network. Of course, you can also see them uh, um, with those dots in uh, the routing table. Uh, the neighbor's map uh, should be updated uh, every time you make changes, but it's also important to follow um, a special sequence to update neighbor's information um, uh, in your network. First of all, it's important to ask all the mains powered devices about the, their neighbors because um, they are the base for the routing table in Z-Wave. Once uh, you start uh, that neighbor's update, you should first start uh, with devices that are uh, next to the controller, and then uh, ask for more and more mains powered devices to report the state. If, uh, for example, um, a net neighbor's update failed for some device, uh, you should proceed with other devices and then return back to that particular device and try to uh, reach it again and ask for neighbors. This is because um, uh, if you updated neighbors information for other devices, you have made a, a mesh uh, for um, uh, to reach that possibly distant device that has failed before. Uh, for example, if you restore um, a backup of your network, uh, usually the routing information is not um, uh, saved in the backup. Uh, 
And uh, in that case, uh, the, rest, uh, the restore uh, operation should be followed by a neighbor update. Um, once um, all the neighbors were updated for mains powered devices, uh, it's time to update them for FLIRS devices uh, that are battery powered devices but always reachable and only then it's worth to uh, start upgrading them for battery devices, uh, battery sleeping devices. Um, in Zidway there is a network reorganization tab that is implementing uh, exactly that mechanism to update neighbors information and once neighbors information was uh, uh, updated uh, every device will uh, receive uh, from the controller uh, by another comment that is issued by this network organization to will receive um, uh, routes for, uh, that were calculated based on the new neighbors map. Um, it's important to notice that uh, sleeping battery devices uh, are not reachable instantly. That means they will receive uh, this uh, routing information uh, only once they wake up and report their wake up status to the controller. Uh, next tool is the most powerful one. Uh, it's a routing map. Uh, this routing map shows actual routes uh, used to deliver packets to the node and from the node. It's important that compared to uh, neighbors uh, map here we uh, record routes that are used uh, during the uh, life cycle of your uh, home automation system uh, and we just record uh, packets that were delivered to devices and uh, that the controller got from devices uh, here uh, you can see separately different routes that were used um, uh, to reach the node from node 1 to node 11. Uh, 11 is on the left of the picture. And um, additionally, you see uh, which routes were used by the node number 11 to reach uh, the controller, which is node number 1. Uh, important, routing, important routing information is also shown. Uh, delivery rate, we calculate um, how many packets were delivered uh, from those that the controller tried to send out. Uh, additionally, we show uh, how many sent operations resulted in rerouting. And um, the third important value is explore frame rate. This is the rate, uh, uh, this rate represents how many packets were received with explorer frame um, mechanism. Uh, that means um, how many frames uh, were using uh, last resort to find us as a controller. Explorer frame is used by the device when the device is not able to deliver the packet using other routes. And uh, this last resort indicates that uh, all the stored uh, routes in the device um, failed and were not able to uh, deliver the packet. Um, additionally, we show important information uh, about the statistics that uh, was used to make this analysis. Uh, Z-Way controller is just recording um, all the packets uh, that were sent out or received uh, from the network. Uh, it does uh, save them uh, up to 5,000 packets. So if uh, there are more packets, old packets are just removed and newer packets are saved. Uh, and um, uh, you can also see um, how long it took to collect those 5,000 uh, packets. So for example, here, 5,000 packets represents 12 hours. You can e even uh, calculate uh, what is the uh, traffic in the network. So this is a pretty typical Z-Wave network where uh, there are no constant polling uh, devices, just uh, reports their status to um, the controller upon a status change. 
uh, and um, uh, most of sensors are configured not to flood the network with uh, useless sensor values. Uh, sometimes if you see a lot of activity or you do network reorganization, you will see that uh, 5,000 uh, uh, packets uh, can be collected in less than half an hour. Uh, additionally, uh, below you can see um, for which um, devices there are no statistics. Uh, in those 5,000 packets. Uh, if you want to get analysis for those devices, you need to um, explicitly ask the controller to send uh, some packets uh, to those devices and uh, uh, especially get packets to receive something back to make uh, um, analysis uh, not only uh, on the way out, but also on the way back. Um, of course, the picture which is behind is just an image that you can upload um, using uh, the menu on this tab. And uh, uh, additionally, you can uh, move nodes uh, to uh, exact location on the map where they're uh, actually installed. This is very useful because uh, uh, this really helps you to understand that uh, uh, for example, when device number one is speaking to device number 11, device number four, which is on the extreme right, uh, is used at least in two routes, which is just crazy. But uh, this is the actual situation. Um, here on the map, um, all the walls uh, except for external walls are made of the same thickness. But in fact, uh, uh, this situation is explainable if you, t if you take into account that uh, uh, there are two very thick concrete walls in this uh, particular uh, apartment that uh, make radio propagation from 1 to 11 just impossible. Um, additionally, you might notice different colors and uh, sizes of nodes. There is a legend on the left, but um, in brief, uh, the bigger the node is, uh, the more often it is used in routing for others. That means if you just power off that node, you will affect um, uh, the network dramatically and uh, break a lot of routes. Uh, colors represents different types of devices. So first, uh, uh, first step to start um, the analysis using roadmap is uh, to uh, upload the floor plan of your house and um, uh, place devices on that map. Uh, and uh, then you should wait a little bit to collect more data and um, start moving your mouse and um, um, use uh, uh, the menu to select uh, which routes are you interested uh, in. Uh, input, output, or um, just look on all the neighbors. Uh, there are also, instead of menu, there is uh, also uh, several shortcuts. For example, if you press I and O, you will switch between incoming and outgoing directions. Uh, so when you move your mouse, you will see um, uh, and press I and O, uh, you will see um, uh, different uh, routes uh, that are used in both directions. Uh, the dashed line represent, uh, uh, represents packet loss. That means there were failures on that particular hop between, repeater, between repeaters or uh, um, uh, source and destination. Uh, the thickness of the line is also meaningful. It uh, represents the frequency of uh, the usage of that particular link. Um, as mentioned before, the size of the node, node represents the importance of that node in, um, in your network. Um, of course, this tool is... Um, almost useless without a floor plan because uh, it will give you just a very beautiful picture but pretty useless. Still, you can look on the statistics uh, on, the, um, on the right, on the annotation, and uh, uh, make some um, 
con uh, conclusions based on that. Uh, to move, uh, to place your devices, you have to click uh, allow node movement uh, and uh, move no nodes and press save button. Uh, here is an example of um, uh, communication between node number one and node number uh, 43, where you see that uh, uh, the path uh, from 1 to 38 and from 38 to 43 is the most used one, and others are very thin, that means they are rarely used. Uh, additionally, uh, you see dash, several dashed lines, that means the uh, link between those two devices experienced uh, problems. Um, uh, here you see a pretty dramatic situation where uh, during the recorded session uh, there were about 20 routes used to reach the node and about same to uh, to reach the controller from that particular node. And this is, uh, this usually means that there, there is a problem. Uh, actually, the device uh, 43 is installed in, um, uh, in a wooden, um, uh, wooden stove, and uh, this is, uh, this probably explains why uh, the link quality is not that very good. Uh, next important tool is, um, uh, background noise um, graphics. Uh, Z-Way will uh, uh, check every 30 seconds, that means twice per minute, will check the radio um, background noise. Uh, and will record it and show here last 24 hours of um, uh, statistics. Uh, what is important here? First of all, you see peaks. Those peaks are not caused by Z-Wave uh, signals, but by other technologies. Because on this um, graphic, uh, only the noise is shown, and um, other Z-Wave networks are never never considered as noise, because the uh, Z-Wave chip is able to decode them. Uh, but uh, other technologies uh, that are using the same frequency range can uh, be visible here and can affect your network. If you see uh, that uh, that the uh, noise uh, level, the ground noise level has a lot of peaks and those peaks are regular, uh, that means there is something uh, that is affecting your network. Uh, and this something uh, comes from uh, other technologies. Uh, in your on your site. Uh, additionally, you can see the typical noise level. Uh, so you can see that here it's about um, minus 53 for um, uh, channel one. Channel one is uh, uh, one frequency, uh, which is 40 kilobits, uh, 9.6 and 40. And um, uh, channel two is 100 kilobits um, um, channel. Uh, in uh, most countries, uh, those Z-Wave channels are located on different radio frequency. Uh, um, in some countries, in some regions, they are located in uh, on in same frequency. Uh, but those are different channels. Uh, and uh, 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 if you see that the background noise level is uh, uh, big, uh, that means your either is literate or polluted by something else. Uh, for example, there might be some uh, uh, noise source because of some apparatus or some devices that are installed in the neighbor's house or something like that. Uh, and uh, if you see that um, uh, the noise level is uh, significantly above minus 80, that uh, means you have a problem in your um, uh, environment, and uh, uh, if it goes up to minus uh, 70 or 60, Z-Wave is certainly not to be used on that particular site. Uh, if you see uh, systematic bursts up to minus 60 or even minus 50, 
Um, is there sound? Is everything okay? Yeah, okay. Uh, so if you see uh, such bursts, um, that means there are some other technology that is uh, um, polluting your uh, ether, and um, this might lead to problems. Um, to give you an example, if uh, uh, you take devices on European frequencies um, and uh, try to use them in US, uh, you will see that uh, the noise level is um, a little bit upper than minus 80, but additionally you will see a lot of bursts up to minus 40. And uh, this usually uh, means that uh, uh, the, this, usually, this is usually caused by 3G, 4G um, um, networks. Uh, that radiates exactly in the uh, on the frequencies where European seed wave is located, uh, and this is why you should uh, always follow recommendation by Silicon Labs to use the right frequency range in uh, uh, the corresponding regions. Um, foreign packets from uh, other seed wave uh, seed wave networks are not seen here. We will see them uh, later. Um, another page uh, is um, uh, transmitter statistics. Uh, it shows you uh, three important uh, information. First is uh, um, a so-called back-off frames versus sent frames. Um, back-off uh, means that the uh, controller was uh, willing to send a packet but uh, the noise level, uh, or um, sorry, not the noise level, but the RSSI uh, was too high. That means something, uh, somebody else was sending on the Z-Wave uh, frequency, and uh, the controller decided not to send uh, his frame right now, but to wait a little bit and send it later. Uh, this is important to understand because this gives you um, um, an understanding about congestion in the network. Uh, additionally, there is a, um, a, um, a pie, a graph, that represents you how many um, packets were, were received okay and how many were received in red with CRC eight and with um, yellow CRC 16 uh, errors. Um, in fact, both are errors for you and um, uh, you just uh, need to add, uh, to, to consider them almost same. This is a CRC error. Uh, CRC errors are usually caused by um, uh, problems in, um, in decoding the packet. Uh, problems in decoding the packet can be usually caused by very low uh, signal to noise level or just bad range. Uh, additionally, it might be caused by um, some burst noise that is uh, uh, mangling uh, the packet uh, uh, in the ether. Uh, so if you see a lot of CRC errors, uh, this is a uh, in, this is an indication that there are range problems here in your network or noise problems in your network. Uh, of course, CRC errors are always present um, uh, because uh, distant devices will be um, still heard by um, the controller. The controller will try to decode those distant uh, packets and. Uh, uh, if it will fail decoding them, it will mark them as CRC uh, errors. Uh, the second graph is showing you uh, the ratio between your packets, packets from your network, and packets from other Z-Wave networks. Uh, of course, every Z-Wave chip is able to see um, packets from other networks. Uh, if home ID do not match, uh, the Z-Wave chip will 
just throw those packets away and will not do anything with them. Um, and um, uh, usually it's normal uh, if you have neighbors uh, uh, you also using Z-Wave, it's uh, pretty okay and pretty normal that you have uh, foreign packets here. If you see uh, too big uh, rate of um, uh, foreign packets, this is an indication that um, uh, devices of your neighbors are very close to you or he has a lot of devices uh, that are speaking a lot. So um, you might experience uh, big congestion. Uh, but again, uh, different Z-Wave networks can coexist without problem and uh, this should not scare you uh, in any way. Uh, you can locate that statistics in installer statistics or um, analytics statistics um, menu. Uh, and um, uh, if you want to analyze uh, congestion rate, it's uh, good to check not only the back off itself, but uh, the ratio between back off and uh, uh, sent packets. If it exceeds uh, two, it might be uh, a problem. But um, uh, here it's important to also look on additional parameters like CRC errors and foreign network um, ratio. Uh, finally, the last tool that is used um, for diagnostics is uh, traffic analysis. Uh, in this way, you can uh, inspect all the packets that are going to the controller and from the controller in real time, uh, going in sniffer uh, tab. This is not a true sniffer, which is called sniffer by Silicon Labs, uh, because here we see only packets that are going to the controller and from the controller and only in own network. Uh, in future, in a few months, um, there will be an, an additional feature unlocked. Uh, you will be able to see um, uh, also device to device um, packets in this analysis, in this traffic analysis, uh, but again, only in your network. So it's not a true sniffer. Uh, it's uh, uh, showing you only packets from your network, so it's uh, not revealing you your neighbors. Um, here you can see as a source and destination, uh, not only the node ID, but also the channel ID. Uh, you can also see the speed, the RSSI, uh, repeaters uh, that were on the path. Um, NCAPS tab shows you the encapsulation uh, uh, I is for multi-channel, S for security, but there are additional, uh, additionally a few more. Uh, and then you see the application uh, decoded packet. Uh, so we can understand that this is a switch binary report with value zero. Uh, this is uh, nice to use when, for example, you suspect some device to send incorrect information to the controller. Uh, or you don't understand why the controller is not able to decode the packet, you can see, uh, see here actual information that was sent to the controller from the device, and then you can use it to understand, okay, I expect, for example, a binary, a switch binary report or sensor binary report, but instead uh, the device is sending something else or is sending nothing. Uh, so when debugging your home automation, it's pretty cool to see uh, what's, what is actually going on on the radio layer. Uh, additionally, you have uh, not only sniffer tab, but sniffer history tab, because the way is saving uh, uh, quite a lot of packets in the history table, and then you can um, uh, get back uh, to those packets, um, all the 5,000 packets that are mentioned uh, above for routing map uh, can be inspected uh, in Sniffer uh, history tab. Uh, so you can go to uh, historical data a few hours ago and check what was going on. Uh, 
if you see destination to uh, uh, if you see broadcast packets they will be sent as destination equal to 255 so now we need to understand how to fix problems uh, and here um, recommendation are the following uh, first of all connect back all unpowered devices that were disconnected uh, um, by the customer um, for different reasons. Uh, if you see unstable routing, it's recommended to uh, add additional repeaters to solve the problem. Uh, sometimes you see that the apartment is split in two areas that are um, uh, that are linked together only for one or two devices and those devices becomes uh, the bottleneck uh, in that situation it's worth to add more devices to um, uh, make the network more linked and more meshed uh, it's important to consider uh, which devices uh, to be used as additional repeaters of course, there are special devices called repeaters uh, presented by several manufacturers uh, and uh, those are very nice to solve the problem. But uh, we suggest not to use plug-in uh, modules like sockets uh, as repeaters if it's possible to install devices in walls. Uh, in wall devices are um, usually uh, uh, they have not a, that good uh, antenna coverage because they are installed in the wall and the radio is uh, worse than for plug-in modules. But important is that the customer is uh, not able to unplug them. Um, quite often customers find something plugged in uh, in the socket and if they don't understand why this, uh, dev that device is plugged in, they, they can just unplug it. If it's a wall plug, even worse, because they can reuse it in some other place and break your uh, network routing table. Uh, so if it's possible, try to uh, install uh, in-wall devices that uh, cannot be replaced uh, or moved. Uh, of course, replace batteries in devices that um, uh, have low battery level. Uh, it's also important uh, that if you found failed node to replace them by new nodes uh, or remove them from the network. Uh, after that, it's also important to assign preferred routes. We will show how to do it in a few slides. And once all that was done, it's recommended to run network reorganization to let the controller ask every device about the neighbors and um, update all the routes in devices. Um, assigning preferred route is available in a uh, uh, newer version of uh, uh, Raspberry and UZB, uh, starting from uh, Silicon Labs SDK 6.71 uh, and upper. Uh, this is a feature by Silicon Labs, uh, so it's not something that we made um, proprietary. It's a standard feature, but uh, quite complex to use, uh, so there is a uh, special alg algorithm in Z-Way to select uh, uh, correct speeds to use with your route and uh, uh, assign every time you do network reorganization to assign that preferred route to the node. Uh, the node can be assigned uh, with a preferred route only if uh, it's a pretty recent one. Again, SDK 671 and upper. Uh, otherwise, uh, that route will be placed just as a last working route. Uh, that means it will also be used first in, in the communications, but compared to preferred route, the last working route can be replaced uh, if it fails. So the first time it fails, it becomes next to last working route, and then it will be uh, just removed. Uh, so um, if your devices are older, uh, 
it's suggested to do network reorganization, um, let's say, weekly to uh, during the night to make sure that last working route is set to something you preferred. Um, there is, uh, on the routing map tab, there is a button to set a preferred route. You just click on it. You click uh, on the path between devices. You press save and uh, um, that route will be pushed to the node. Uh, when assigning preferred routes, it's important to follow uh, several rules. First of all, try to pick up the thickest path as possible. That means the most used and the most reliable, certainly. Never use dashed lines uh, in uh, uh, preferred route because that means you are using in a preferred route as a link that failed many times in the com in, in communication between devices. And if you use it, use it, there is a big chance that it will fail for you. Um, finally, try to use uh, repeaters in the preferred route that cannot be unplugged by the customer uh, or easily removed by the customer. Using this tool, you can uh, not only set routes from the controller to devices or from the device to controller, but also device to device routes. Uh, unfortunately, the routing map is not able to show statistics for such communications, but um, it will still show you that route uh, in the user interface, so you will be able to inspect it. Uh, when you set up preferred routes, battery devices um, do not uh, apply that configuration instantly, but um, you need to wait for them to wake up before um, configuring them. Uh, finally, once all this is done, you should run network reorganization. Uh, it's suggested to do it regularly. Um, between, for example, during the night, for example, every week. Um, during this process, the controller will ask all devices to update neighbors. Uh, then it will push to each device the new uh, routing table. Um, and uh, that routing table will, of course, include preferred route if it was set up. Uh, here is a screen how the network organization is uh, going for a network. Uh, here you can just see what is going on and you can see on the progress of uh, the process. Uh, if you have uh, all devices powered and no failed devices, this process um, in networks of, uh, with uh, 30 devices usually uh, takes uh, about five minutes. If you have failed devices, it can last up to 20 or even, even 30 minutes because the controller will try several times to reach failed devices. Because first it will think, think that um, uh, it cannot reach them because of uh, uh, missing routes, but, and will retry again after other devices uh, uh, reported uh, their neighbors. So it will take quite a lot of time, uh, and th this is also a reason why you should remove failed nodes as soon as possible or, or, or replace them by new nodes. Um, if you want to use uh, those tools presented by Zidway with other controllers, it's important to uh, disable uh, in the configuration file Auto configuration and um, uh, a flag that uh, uh, force is a way to become SIS. Uh, this is to be able to remove the controller later from the network and uh, not to change parameters that were set up by your primary controller. Um, after you have configured this, you can. Um, include the way as a secondary controller in your network. That means you just press include a new device on your primary controller, and in the way you select um, uh, join network. Uh, 
it's important that uh, uh, the control, the primary controller that you use uh, should uh, push the security keys to the way if you want to be able to negotiate with devices securely. If you don't need this and you need only to um, do network diagnostics, you, you don't need to keep in mind the uh, network security aspect. Uh, finally, if the lifeline group of devices uh, in your network is bigger than um, for one node only, in that case, uh, you can add the way in this lifeline group uh, and uh, the device will report uh, its state not only to the, your primary controller but also to the way. This will allow um, you to automatically collect all the data that come from the devices and uh, use that data in diagnostics. Uh, of course, if you want to remove the way, uh, from the network. Don't forget to remove all the associations made to Z-Way because otherwise Z-Way will be treated as a dead node uh, by the device and device will um, uh, experience delays in communication. Uh, this is all about Z-Way network, uh, Z-Wave network diagnostics with Z-Way. Um, just a brief introduction about a different uh, features of Z-Way. Uh, Z-Way is full-featured Z-Wave gateway that supports a huge number of devices. Uh, this is because uh, Z-Way implements uh, common classes, Z-Wave common classes, and not uh, relies and does not rely on uh, device-specific templates. Uh, so we just implement Z-Way protocol, and that helps to support more than 2,000 devices. Uh, the way has its own home automation engine, which is open sourced and written in JavaScript. Um, the way has a web user interface that can be used uh, in browsers and on mobile phones. Uh, remote access is also part of the way uh, and allows you to access your home from any point. Additionally, you can use this to access your site where you diagnose uh, run the diagnostics uh, remotely. For example, if your customer is asking you to uh, help him, you can install Z-Way and use remote access to access those diagnostic tools remotely. Um, there are mobile apps that work with Z-Way. Uh, Z-Way has a backup and restore features that allows you uh, not only to backup and restore on the same controller, but also to move um, your network from one controller to another controller. Uh, Z-Way is a Z-Wave Plus uh, device. It implements security as zero, security as two, and uh, now also smart start. Uh, and uh, finally, there is a very nice integration API uh, built in, which uh, is uh, uh, split in several parts. HTTP REST API, uh, very useful for controller-to-controller -controller integration and um, making web user interfaces. There is a JavaScript API to write your own modules uh, and own home automation. Um, and there is a C API to integrate Z-Way library in uh, uh, your controller. Uh, Z-Way is uh, good not only for customers, but uh, also for advanced users because of the powerful API and all the diagnostic tools um, for installers because it's installer friendly, has uh, an easy integration because of the API um, and um, a lot of diagnostics, diagnostic tools. Um, for developers, it's nice because they can test their devices because before sending to Z-Wave certification. Uh, many devices, um, can be tested with Z-Way um, just by including them and uh, um, if they don't pass a so-called interview uh, by Z-Way, that means there is certainly a problem in the device. Uh, manufacturers do use uh, Z-Way on production line to make automated tests. Again, this is because uh, Z-Way has a pretty nice API that can be easily automated.
you can include devices through the API. You can uh, send comments through the API. You can um, trigger uh, actions on uh, packet reception, etc. Uh, additionally, gateway developers do use Z-Wave stack in their controller just as a Z-Wave, uh, robust Z-Wave stack. Uh, if you want to start using Z-Way and you uh, have never tried it before, you can, uh, you have to buy a USB or Raspberry hardware. You can buy it on Amazon or uh, from your local distributor. Uh, for a USB, you will need a license. Um, there is um, also a demo license that you can apply right in the user interface. Um, Raspberry do not require a license because it's already built in uh, in the hardware. Uh, to install Z-Way, proceed to our website. Uh, here you can find instructions how to get it on your Raspberry Pi. Uh, additionally, you can uh, download Linux or Microsoft Windows builds and use uh, Z-Way on those platforms too. Thank you for watching, watching uh, and we wish you reliable networks. Um, now we can answer questions. Uh, so please um, type your questions uh, and um, we will try to answer them. So question number one was, um, 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 is the preferred route uh, part of um, Z-Wave Silicon Labs stack? Yes, it is part of um, Silicon Labs uh, uh, stack. Um, another question was about different materials um, uh, that uses aluminum foil uh, we don't have uh, exact um, uh, uh, exact data how to um, uh, how the how it is about attenuation with uh, such materials, but I think uh, you can find in the internet some researches. Um, again, you can even measure it uh, because uh, Z-Wave gives you RSSI uh, for uh, each packet. Um, of course, metal um, is indeed a reflector for Z-Wave networks, so it on, not only attenuates um, uh, if you want to pass through the wall, it also reflects the uh, signal, and uh, even if it's not a sheet of metal, but um, uh, just um, uh, a grid, uh, like in reinforced um, concrete, uh, if the grid um, uh, has a period of about uh, uh, 30 centimeters or smaller, it will act as a mirror for the Z-Wave signal. So keep that in mind. Um, uh, and metal uh, reflection, reflection from metal will also um, uh, introduce quite huge interference in your room. That means sometimes you will uh, experience uh, problems like you see uh, good reception in one part uh, of the apartment and only 30 centimeters away from that point you will see a pretty bad reception and then if you move further 30 centimeters you will see good reception again. So this is uh, because of the interference. Um, in Z-Wave, um, uh, network topology is, um, uh, cannot uh, be, uh, have groups and clusters like in Zigbee. Uh, Z-Wave network topology is a full mesh. That means all devices uh, can speak uh, uh, each other directly uh, if they're in a direct vicinity or through routing. Uh, no clustering uh, possible. Um, oh, let me just scroll down. Uh, 
Um, yeah, there is also a question uh, that um, uh, there were quite significant changes announced in uh, uh, Z-Wave, that Z-Wave will become open. Uh, this is indeed a very good news, uh, and uh, this will happen end of this year or, or beginning of next year. Uh, this process will take about half a year, and uh, different papers and uh, white papers and documents will be released. Uh, open does not mean open source. That means um, Silicon Labs will release uh, uh, documents about uh, the protocol uh description but uh, they will not release the stack itself uh so any other manufacturer who will uh wish to join the z wave uh community and make chips for z wave or make own stack for z wave you will need to uh, follow uh that documentation those rules and pass uh, a pretty strict certification uh, this is what we do with our Zidway software, which will certainly become uh, one of the available software uh, um, for uh, Zidwave um, gateways. Um, yeah, there was a question about the difference uh, between um, CRC8 and CRC16. Uh, it's a pretty important um, uh, question in regards to third generation devices. Uh, in Zidway third generation, um, uh, with uh, 40 kilobit speed, uh, there was uh, there were um, CRC8, that means 8 bits, used for uh, checksum. Uh, this resulted uh, quite often in uh, uh, devices reporting absolutely insane numbers uh, that you see in your gateway user interface, um, and uh, but still the controller uh, treat those numbers as valid. Why does it happen? It happens because um, uh, eight bits. It's only. Uh, it's not protecting enough uh, the packet from being mangled uh, and uh, uh, it might happen that uh, the packet was received mangled uh, but in that way uh, in the way that uh, several bits were changed simultaneously and the CRC still matched the CRC that was uh, in the packet or the CRC itself was also mangled and accidentally matched uh, with the calculated uh, based on other bytes in the packet. Uh, this resulted in uh, um, strange numbers to be still uh, accepted as valid uh, and shown in the user interface. Uh, quite many customers complained about uh, third generation devices that uh, are reporting insane numbers, for example, once a week uh, just randomly, some huge number, and uh, uh, this affected graphics in uh, in those user interfaces. Uh, so this is the explanation. Uh, in uh, fifth generation um, uh, Z-Wave, uh, the, uh, there there were one additional channel added, uh, 100 kilobits channel. In this channel, uh, CRC uh, 16 is used. Uh, it's used mostly because uh, the speed is higher, so we need more protection uh, from noise. Uh, but um, uh, since the uh, CRC um, uh, doubled, uh, it made uh, the communication much more robust and uh, uh, much more reliable. Uh, and um, this is why the problem that I mentioned uh, uh, just before is not happening with new devices that are based on uh, fifth generation uh, nodes, uh, fifth generation Z Wave chip. Uh, also important that if your devices are still fifth generation, but your controller is an old one and still based on third generation, you will not benefit of uh, this 100 kilobit channel and you will not benefit from this CRC16. 
uh, you will still use the old CRC8 uh, and you will still experience all the problems mentioned um, above. Uh, additionally, if security is used, it is protecting even more uh, your data because an additional, uh, beside the CRC, there is an additional check that the packet was not mangled um, and this is checked by the security scheme. Uh, this makes it uh, even more uh, reliable. Um, if you, uh, there, there was also a question about um, network organization and network update. Uh, in Zidway, it's same. Uh, so uh, it's uh, um, network uh, routes, uh, node neighbors update is uh, a process to update neighbors and uh, network update or network reorganization uh, usually are used as synonyms, uh, is to update all the neighbors uh, for every device and then push new um, um, routes to all the nodes. Uh, such a process exists in many uh, controllers. Uh, Z-Way can also be used, um, yeah, it's another question, Z-Way can also be used um, to uh, update um, uh, firmwares of other devices. Uh, it is possible if you have a firmware. Uh, so there was a question about, um, for example, Fibaro devices. Uh, they can be updated if you obtain the firmware, but Fibaro do not release them as, as far as I know. Uh, but uh, if you have a controller uh, that is not supporting OTA uh, over, over the air upgrade, uh, you can use Z-Way as a secondary controller to uh, make firmware upgrade of those devices. Um, how about 700 series? Uh, we plan to release Z-Way for 700 series, um, uh, I think, in Q3. Uh, and but we will keep you all updated. Please uh, subscribe to our mailing list. We promise not to spam you and uh, notify you about important uh, um, releases. Uh, if you add uh, the way as a secondary controller, as mentioned before, uh, you will get all the analytic tools, except for that uh, those analytic tools mostly rely on packets to the con to the way and from the way. That means you will have to uh, explicitly make traffic between the way and devices um, if uh, devices will not report. Um, um, information to Z-Way by themselves. Um, is it possible to calculate the RSSI <coughs> from, um, uh, to the distance and back? N no, it's not because it depends on the antenna. A RSSI is a value that is perceived by the chip and between the chip and the real ether, there is a uh, the antenna and antenna amplification if if used. Uh, so it's not possible to directly um, link those numbers um, together. There was a question um, about Dune HD media player um, that can run the way. Uh, as we know, that one was not updated by Dune HD for quite some time, but we still make builds for them and can make uh, the latest release uh, uh, if um, uh, asked by Dune HD. So probably ping them and uh, they will uh, come to us and we will make that build possible. Uh, of course, you can uh, use that uh, Z-Way installed on Dune HD like on any other platform to become secondary controller. Um, yeah, there was a qu question again about the prefer route, preferred routes. 
Uh, in Silicon Labs documentation, it's called uh, priority, assigned priority route, uh, or even assigned priority link, APL, uh, abbreviated, and you can find it in the documentation of uh, serial, of um, not serial, just API, uh, API of uh, Z-Wave SDK. Um, the documentation how to decode the payload of packets um, uh, there is no such a documentation uh, by, made by us but if you look in the z-wave command classes specification which is opened for several years now you can find information how to decode those packets uh, additionally uh, we uh, uh, Z-Way software relies on an XML which is used to decode those packets. So there is a big XML that is just parsing, uh, uh, used to parse uh, incoming packets. So you can also take that XML. The XML itself comes from uh, Silicon Labs um, SDK. Um, interviews. Yeah, there is a question about interviews. Um, First of all, what is uh, interview? Interview is a process where Z-Way is uh, asking a lot of questions um, um, and uh, get answers from the device to uh, understand what are the capabilities of that device. Uh, the interview is usually made in the following way. First of all, we ask what is your, do you support security? Yes. First of all, negotiate security, then we uh, then the way software asks for versions uh, of each command class uh, and uh, render all, all command classes. Once we know version of each command class, we can ask uh, every um, command class. We send all the gets that are available for that command class. For example, if it's a switch binary will um, ask for the current switch binary state of the device. If it's sensor binary, we will ask for supported um, uh, units, supported uh, sensor types. And uh, once reported, uh, there will be uh, uh, sensor, uh, a get for each sensor type to get all the values. Um, so, Sometimes, indeed, it happens that um, devices do not pass interview. Uh, usually, there are several uh, cause of uh, that. First, the device might be bugging, just to not, not reply to uh, uh, the controller. Sometimes, it happens that it replies to the controller, but uh, in some encapsulations, for example, it can reply non-secure, but don't reply secure, or reply uh, in channel but do not reply outside of channels uh, so again it's a device problem and should be fixed but uh, it's quite hard to find that problem using uh, uh, the ctt tool the um, tool that is used to test uh, for certification of the way devices uh, finally there uh, there might be a problem with um, the way being too aggressive in sending many packets in a row but um, actually, device developers should expect such behavior from a controller because controller can be aggressive in asking uh, many packets in a row. Uh, Z-Way is never asking more than one question at a time, but um, uh, some devices um, do not reply if uh, uh, there is no one second delay, for example, between questions, uh, and it's a problem. Uh, finally, there might be the way bugs that exists, of course, uh, we're also humans. And uh, if you write us, uh, uh, attach the log and detailed description and probably provide us remote access to debug it, we will certainly fix it and um, make a release. Um, when it comes to uh, huge networks, uh, with 150 devices, three floors. Um, some people do one controller for the entire house, and uh, this is um, uh, the network becomes quite big, uh, the routing becomes quite messy. Um, 
if you um, follow a pretty uh, important rule to never pull your devices and to remove all the sensor reports that you don't need. Uh, additionally, adjust the report period to um, uh, some reasonable values uh, for devices that you do need. Uh, in that case, you can still use your huge, big network uh, as one single Z-Wave network. Uh, what do I mean by adjusting uh, uh, sensor reports uh, and remove uh, sensor reports? Uh, for example, if you take uh, a typical plug, uh, it will report you additionally voltage, uh, uh, some, I don't know, current, power consumption, etc., etc., and many devices do send that information every sec every 30 seconds. 30 seconds is the minimum possible by the Z-Wave protocol uh, allowed to send um, uh, sensor values. Uh, you are not allowed to send values more often. But even here, if you have, uh, for example, 30 plugs in your network, uh, in, in your 150 devices network, or for example, you have a lot of um, uh, wall insert uh, switches and dimmers that also send uh, uh, power consumption information. If all those 150 devices or even 30 of them will send that information every 30 seconds, that will give you at least um, every second uh, a packet or even five times per second. Uh, why is it that? Because uh, incoming packet, uh, is always followed by um, an acknowledgement that is sent back to the device. So you still use the network. And uh, with routing, you use quite a lot of network resources. Additionally, if you use security, especially zero security, there will be not only one packet as a report, but there will be three packets. One packet for non-get, another for non-report, and then the security message encapsulated, uh, encrypted. Uh, that means instead of uh, one packet for the message and one packet for the acknowledgement, you will have uh, three times more. Uh, so it's important to reduce this. Uh, in some cases, you would prefer to uh, split your network in several parts. This is especially useful if you have um, uh, the topology that do not allow you to make um, uh, one single network. For example, you have one building, uh, one house and another garage, for example, which is uh, 20 meters apart from the house. It's not worth to make uh, all that a single network. I will probably skip uh, questions that are not about network diagnostics and uh, are about using Z-Way because we will make um, uh, a dedicated webinar for um, the way uh, usage. Um, to upgrade the SDK of uh, the Raspberry module, it's same as for UZB, you should go to the ex expert UI controller information and press the firmware upgrade button. Um, The routes um, that are used, the routes number uh, one, two, three, and four that are uh, used um, to send to the device or used by the controller itself to communicate to the device, they are calculated by the internal uh, routing algorithm of uh, the Z-Wave chip, and you cannot affect them in any way except for choosing the um, preferred route. Uh, will we use, will we move to ZIP and ZWare um, stack instead of Z-Way stack? Um, because uh, this is mandatory for 700 version. Uh, definitely not, uh, because we believe uh, Z-Way stack is much better um, in uh, some diagnostics, uh, for example, and uh, network resolution, uh, network problems resolution. Uh, additionally, since uh, the way will, will become open, um, there will be room for additional Z-Wave stack. 
and uh, uh, the rule to make ZIP uh, mandatory will certainly cease. Um, ZIP is a very nice uh, stack to build your gateway very fast uh, based on existing uh, reliable stack, but um, uh, we used our uh, more than 10 years experience to make uh, uh, internal er algorithms to make network more reliable and uh, network delivery better. Uh, that's why we believe that uh, this stack um, is, uh, 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 is nice and uh, should be kept. Um, yeah, there is another question about updating uh, firmwares on Raspberry and UZB. Uh, will it result in uh, result in losing uh, current uh, information about the network? No, the network information will be uh, still um, um, on the um, uh, on your dongle even after the upgrade. What is the roadmap for Z-Way? Um, yeah, well, we're uh, improving the software. Uh, so in few, probably in future webinar, we will um, uh, give more uh, information about um, uh, our roadmap. But in brief, uh, uh, we have uh, just released yesterday a new version that introduced a new scripting uh, tool for advanced users and installers. So it's a nice graphical uh, uh, UI that allows you to write uh, JavaScript code uh, without being really very deep technician. Um, there is a helper that uh, helps you to make the code. Uh, additionally, there will be installer uh, cabinet to uh, help you support as an installer to support um, uh, many Z-Way controllers remotely. That will be based on Find it with Me service, uh, where you will be able to see all your uh, controllers at once and uh, uh, see their status and uh, log to any controller uh, right from uh, that user interface. Uh, additionally, um, there will be a new mobile app for iOS and Android released um, in uh, upcoming months. I think about June, uh, maybe we'll uh, finally do it. We're now running in friendly user tests, uh, I think, next week. Uh, so many of you might uh, participate and um, test that those mobile apps. Uh, of course, it will introduce additionally new infrastructure for push messages, um, uh, push notifications, and uh, notifications in general. Um, yeah, and of course, 700 series support, um, it's already there, but uh, there is no um, hardware um, to run it on. So um, once uh, we will see Raspberry based on 700 series, we will um, be able to release that too. Um, yeah, another question uh, if... Uh, you can use two raspberries to run in different places and get analytics from both of course you can you can also take uh, you can also enable for example if you're using raspberry pi and you enable wi-fi uh, you can then uh, power your raspberry pi from a power, pretty big power bank and move it move it across the house to get statistics in different places so this might be a good tool for you to uh, uh, first of all see sniffer traces uh, in different parts of the network and additionally uh, get uh, uh, information about noise. Uh, for example, if you see a pretty big background noise, you can just use that way to move in the direction of uh, uh, increasing noise and uh, locate the noise source uh, and then eliminate it if possible, if it's not your, your neighbor. Um, yeah, there is uh, also a question about na node's neighbor um, that there is uh, a device that is missing in the node neighbors list and uh, by the way also in routing map. Uh, uh, indeed, um, the 
portable controller is never listed in neighbors list. Additionally, it's never listed in uh, uh, roadmap. This is because portable controllers are special types of uh, devices, uh, uh, types of controllers in Zigbee network. They do not have neighbors. They are roaming. That means they are made to be movable. Uh, and hence there is no need to uh, account them in the routing table because they never route and they never rely on uh, a stable routing table. Uh, that means they can be moved in any part of the network and they must reorganize, uh, must find um, the way to reach um, any recipient from any location of the network. Finally, they also rely on Explore Frame as a last resort to locate um, uh, uh, the destination. Um, yeah, what is um, our experience in usage um, of PCB uh, antenna versus uh, uh, a dedicated external antenna? So from our experience, it almost doubles the range. Uh, so if you have an apartment or a home uh, with uh, concrete walls bigger than 100 square meters, um, we suggest to use Raspberry with external antenna only. Uh, because it makes your uh, your network much more reliable. Uh, of course, if your construction materials are um, uh, not that uh, uh, affecting the network, that means, for example, um, typical U.S. house um, uh, is not built of stone, and uh, there are not that many bricks even in it, uh, and no concrete. Uh, uh, this uh, makes the network more reliable um, than in a typical European wood, uh, concrete house. And um, uh, this explains why in U.S. usually ZipWave is working very well without external antennas. Uh, we don't use um, uh, full dipole antennas because they're just big. Uh, and... Um, uh, in most cases, it's uh, enough to use um, uh, half of uh, dipole. That means uh, the lambda, the quarter of lambda, quarter of the wavelength antenna. Uh, it's um, only 8.6 uh, uh, centimeters length. Uh, pretty small, uh, but having a good ground, it gives you almost the same range as uh, full dipole. Yeah, if you have um, uh, if, if you have some problems with Zidway upgrading SDK, etc., that uh, I see, for example, um, uh, in in the uh, in questions, just write us on uh, support at Zidway.me, and we will try to help you and um, assist. But first of all, uh, try to upgrade uh, the Zidway itself first because uh, some problems might be fixed uh, with new versions. Um, yeah, getting back to antenna, uh, do we use uh, uh, duplex antennas? or uh, So we use um, all the Z-Wave chips except for the very latest um, uh, Z-Wave chip um, made for gateways, which is called ZG14. All, all the other antennas are using only uh, uh, other chips are using one antenna uh, for um, RX and TX, and only ZG14 can be used to, to have different antennas for um, um, in and out, T T TX and RX, uh, if I understood your question correctly. Um, Uh, okay. Uh, 
Uh, is UZB as a hardware better than Raspberry in terms of power transmission? Um, uh, actually, it's not because UZB is a very small dongle and has a very small antenna. Uh, Raspberry has a much better antenna, uh, but um, if you're using the new Raspberry Pi 4, uh, they have added a lot of shields for um, the main CPU and um, uh, well, Wi-Fi Ethernet chip, and uh, that uh, affected quite a lot the antenna, so probably the new Raspberry will have um, antenna made uh, in a different shape that uh, uh, is not affected as much that by those shields. Uh, but still Raspberry antenna is better. Additionally, you can make, uh, uh, ex you can connect external antenna. Okay, so uh, if you still want to ask questions, uh, please uh, move them in the question section uh, because um, Unfortunately, I had no time to read the chat itself. Yeah. And um, if uh, that's all, we will um, we will end with our today's session. And uh, uh, we suggest you to subscribe to our mailing lists. Uh, so we will um, include you in our mailing for Z-Way uh, related topics. Uh, then you will be able in the uh, in all mails that comes from us you are able to um, um, to change your mailing settings and uh, for example decide which topics you uh, wish to get from us um, uh, and uh, we will come later uh, I think uh, in two weeks with uh, additional session about um, Z-Way related topics. In that session we will um, make a brief uh, explanation of uh, how to use Z-Way uh, as a customer, as an installer, and also present all, uh, all the new features that appeared um, in the last half a year. Thank you very much, stay safe, sit at home, and uh, profit uh, of that time to learn new things and uh, make your skills better. Thank you very much.